All right, good morning, everybody. Today, I'm sorry, my shirt, I got a little, little messy when I was cooking this morning. Um, and yes, it's only like 5.30. Um, so what we're gonna do today, I'm gonna do a recap <clears throat> of the different types of cooking methods. And then I did two videos for you. Um, but we need to get started though, cause it's uh, like a lot, it's been a long. Um, let me do share screen. All right, let's roll. Okay, let's get this out of here. This down. Okay, I'm going to kind of not fly through this, but I'm going to go rather quick because we got a lot of video. Okay, cooking methods. You know, we're going to go through these. You know, it's a heat transfer from a source to food. Um, radiant hook cooking. Okay, so you have your dry heat cooking methods. Remember these broiling, grilling, roasting, baking. Um, dry heat cooking methods with fat saute, pan fry, stir fry, and deep fry. Deep frying is a dry heat cooking method. Um, broiling, heat from the top. Charbroil, um, that's when you cook it on a grill, heat source is from the bottom. Um, typical grilling, barbecue grilling. Heat source is from the bottom, not naturally natural gas. It's usually wood, or um, a charcoal, which is another type of wood. Um, yeah, grilling, how to season it, why you need to put your hash marks on there for even cooking. Um, roasting, hot air completely surrounding meat. Um, adds, you know, locks in your flavor and juices. Uh, griddling, it's a heat source underneath a giant metal plate, literally. Saute means to jump, and it's when you do the medium to high heat cooking with fat to caramelize and cook your, your items evenly. Stir frying, Asian style, um, cooked quick in a round kettle in order to encourage the tossing. Um, pan frying, this is stir frying. Pan frying, you could do a shallow fry or a deep fry. Um, and then here's your different types of fried items and why, you know, you need to bread them or um, what they end up looking like. I'm not going to go through a whole ton of this because we did this. I just want to do a recap. Okay. Breading procedure, dry, wet, dry. Um, there is one that's battered, which is dry, wet, into the, into the cooker. The wet that you put it in before has to have some sort of starch in it in order for it to fry. Uh, moist heat cooking, simmering, poaching, shallow poaching, blanching, steaming. These are for delicate, moist foods. Oh, does it say moist food? It's for delicate foods. Um, simmering, you know, minimal bubbles. Um, poaching is for tender cuts of meat. Okay, you don't want to, you know, you don't need it for, you know, big cuts of meat. That's for like stewing or braising. Tender cuts, fish, chicken. Um, and there's some poached items. Shallow poaching is you have the liquid halfway up. All right, blanching, the purpose of this. We're gonna have a video about eggs with this in a second. Um, you cook something to halt the cooking process, you shock it into ice water. Um, steaming, steam comes from underneath the food. The food does not come into contact with the boiling liquid. The steam cooks through and um, that's the most efficient way to keep all nutritional value of your product. Um, okay, let's get down here. Combination cooking. Braising, that is for your large cuts of meat. That's like this up here, okay? Um, that's a, looks like a whole leg of lamb or something, yeah, maybe it's a shoulder. Um, this is a lamb shank. These are large pieces of meat. Stewing is for small pieces, okay? So let's get down to stewing. There's your small pieces, and that's blanched. I don't like blanched meat. Um, this is what I like right here, you this color. This and this, if that's the same meat, that'll taste 10 times better than that thing. Just saying. Um, okay, sous vide, I don't have a machine for that. It's basically like a shrink wrap. They sell this at the store. You can get a shrink wrapped cooked piece of meat or a raw piece of meat with seasoning on it and you simmer it in water. Um, and then microwave cooking. All right, and then there's your different, there's recap on the different done, doneness of things. All right, so 
I want to get into these videos so you guys can see this. Okay, so the first one, um, I'll just let it play. Okay, so what we have here, um, this is part, part of the, the pack I got from Piazza. Um, so this is Fisher's Farms <coughs> Uncured Smoked Boneless Ham. Um, and what I'm going to do, it is open because I had to, I had to taste test. I just couldn't hold I had a sample. I always have so what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this. Okay. Put that aside. Um, and then also we got a nice pack of Amish chicken, Miller's brand from Piazza. We're going to do um, a rolled chicken. Okay. Well, it's basically a roulade. Um, several different terms for it. But what we're going to do is slice that thin and we're going to take our blanched broccoli from yesterday and ham and then some um, queso fresco and we're going to stuff the chicken with it. So, this All right, is the so what we want to do is take the blanched broccoli like this, cut little pieces. You want to cut it skinny because this is going to go inside the chicken. All right, so we're going to do this. This is all stuff that I just got the other day. So, there we go. The key is, once you touch, you know, you don't want to touch anything after the chicken. So you want to get exactly what you need out. That way, once <clears throat> you touch chicken, you don't have to go, like, I'm not going to touch raw chicken and go grab my cheese. So, I want to get a different knife. Cheese. I want to make sure everything is just touched once, okay? And then this is just for me to eat, so that's why I don't have gloves on right now. Don't judge me. Um, so I'm going to cut pieces, and you'll see why I'm cutting these kind of pieces in a minute. So, I get this. There's my cheese. I'm done with that. I'm not going to touch that or the broccoli anymore. Um, but everything on this board, once this chicken touches it, is it's done. From, you can't use this board yeah, from or any product on it board afterwards. afterwards. Okay, so let's get that this one. chicken breast out. And this is boneless, skinless. Um, this is your tender. So when you go to the restaurants and get some chicken tenders, that's what that is. Okay, I'm gonna lay this flat. It's already been cleaned, trimmed. There's really no fat on it. Um, it looks really nice. But what this is called, if you remember from your knife cuts, is called a butterfly. Um, typically, you could cut a pocket in here, stuff everything in a pocket. But what I'm going to do is the roulade. So I want to try to figure out the middle. So I cut this even. The sharp knife. This is very hard to do. Don't I'm try cut to straight in half. Okay. Okay, now look. So now I have two nice pieces. equal width. Then I'm going to take one, place it on the ham, take two, place it on the ham, then I take my broccoli like this. Okay. And like I said, once you touch this raw chicken, anything touched here, Either has to go inside of it or go into the trash because you cannot really salvage these items once they've touched raw chicken. But once you do this a few thousand times, you kind of get an idea of how much it's going to fit. You know. All right. Then the tricky part is. Hold on. Sorry, my, my children were yelling okay. at me at the same time. You want to roll this? Like this. Now it's not going to look perfect, but that's why we have skewers. So I'm going to skewer this. Another thing straight is across one way. Do this a few thousand straight times. Straight across you won't this way. Your okay. So now I have this and piece. You know that did fall out. I can stuff it back in there. I have. So I'm going to cook done. this. I'm going to sear it, flip it, sear it, and then we're going to finish it with a little cooking liquid. Okay. So same way. Stuff, roll. Okay. Skewer. 
and Just skewer that. All right, so what's gonna happen? This is gonna sear, roll it, sear it, um, put it in the pan. I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, chicken stock in there, um, and then we're gonna finish it in the oven. Okay, so yeah, like I said, after you do this a few thousand times, you don't stab yourself, but you just remember you learn where your own hands are. So, okay, so let's go back. Oh no. Um, here's the next one. Thank you. All right, here's our chicken. Just season it, garlic, uh, paprika. Didn't go too crazy. Pan is getting hot. We're gonna do the double cooking method in here. I mean, combination. So this is a combination of cooking. Oil. So dry heat first, moist heat second. It finishes with moist heat. That's how you get that internal temperature of 165 degrees in that chicken. Because this is going to be roasted with a little bit in there. You know I got the butter. Got cheese and ham. Oh, that's butter. This is the top, so we're going to cook that first, then sear it on the bottom, and then finish it on the bottom. So, like so. And those skewers used to be 10 inches long. I, I measured the pan and cut those things. Those um, just so they fit inside there. Around the ham. You can actually make a strip. You see how I pulled it away from the pan again? That's going to make the fat like underneath it. So it gets nice and strong out. And then, <clears throat> so the seasoning, you don't want to salt a lot because the ham is salty. So, um, I didn't put a whole lot in there. I'll probably put a little salt and pepper in the sauce. Um, but the rest of it, you don't want to salt. Yeah. All right. It's so this is going to sear, and, and you'll see it's going to start to get color already. So you'll see why I don't want to move these a whole lot. And then uh, the next step of this will be turn it around the other side, and we're going to add some chicken stock to it, and then cover it. Um, so that's going to be the combination cooking. I'm going to cover it, finish it in the oven, and then we pull it out, um, hit the, take the, the chicken out, unskewer it, Make a little pan sauce with heavy cream, seasoning, and then plate presentation. Okay. And you see the, oh yeah. Well, that's color on that. That ham gets a little crispy. Okay. Um, it's kind of a dry ham. It's not a water yeah, added ham. It's a really nice ham. So, it gets a nice brown with all the As you can see, it's getting a nice color to it. Okay. I'm going to do that to both sides, and then I'll, uh, Get it back on it. All right. Okay, let's keep going with this. Um, and I'll show you the plated presentation. You're going to hear my kids scream in this one because they're doing homework. Okay, so it's browned on both sides. That's the dry heat. Okay, now we're going to add some oh, chicken stock. Okay, so that's chicken stock. Okay. And then I'm going to put a little heavy cream in there. So heavy cream is 40% fat, so you can add this okay, so that, to a hot pan, okay. and it won't burn. It's not like if you add milk, milk would burn. Milk will separate and turn this up to a simmer. Heavy cream, so milk is, even vitamin D, the thick milk, that's 4% uh, milk fat. That stuff is 40% milk fat. So when you put it in there, okay. It'll actually keep cooking, it'll keep the fat and then cook out the whey, literally, like the water from the, the milk. And then it'll reduce down to a nice And then you can, make, you can use, you know, a bechamel sauce, but heavy cream, you can just add straight to this. And it'll reduce without scorching. So while that's moving, you want to take these, make sure they're not attached to the bottom. Yeah, so we're breaking sticking, loose. and that'll get up all the fond, which is the little crispies off the bottom of it. Yeah, all right, so that's coming up to a simmer. So I'm gonna cover this. We're gonna put it in the oven. All right, so. 
Where's this at? Uh, okay, maybe it's this one. Hey, there we go. This one I'm gonna because my kids scream at this one. Okay, so I'm taking this out of the oven. It was about 170 in the center. Okay, where the cheese and the broccoli was, because I don't. That's where it needs to be 170 or 165 minimum because it's got chicken juice in it now. All right, so here's the pieces. So I'm gonna take them out, sit them on this plate, let those rest for a second, and then. I take the pan back, <clears throat> which is extremely hot, okay? Um, take the pan back, I wish I could move that, and then you wanna taste this cooking liquid. So I tasted that earlier, or you know, at that point, I'm gonna add some dill to it, um, salt, and then this is gonna be put right on top of the chicken after it's sliced. So whatever flavors you have here, and this flavor in this thing, I couldn't, I can't tell you what it tastes like, it was so good because it was uh, the chicken broth, like homemade chicken broth. So it had a nice chickeny flavor, um, the heavy cream. So it's like, you know, not Alfredo sauce. I can't really describe it. Um, and then dill. Dill is just a really fresh herb. Um, and what I'm gonna do is reduce this. So reducing is you're gonna turn the heat back on and cook this down. Uh, and what that's gonna do is just make a nice thick sauce, okay? So that's starting to come up to a boil. And then there's some little nubbins stuck to the bottom here. You know, this is little pieces of pan. Some of the cheese melted out, um, but you'll see in a sec. Okay. So it's gonna keep cooking. See the simmer? Almost coming to a boil. Just keep tasting it. Um, I like the flavor of it. I think I seasoned it a little bit more with some salt. So I shut that down to low. Go back here. Um, my hands have worked in restaurants for years, so this does not bother me. But some people, like if you, like you guys, if you try cooking something like this, wear a glove because it gets really hot. So throw these in the trash and then you can try, I mean, you can use a meat fork, you can use some tongs. Um, I'm just a hands-on person. So <clears throat> I tried this with a pair of tongs just to be the, do the right way for you guys. But then I slowly jump back into my old habits. Yeah. Okay. So slice slice let's keep going so get this sliced up and then i'm just going to show you this a simple presentation you could serve this with rice some mashed potatoes some roasted potatoes whatever you want okay and then boom see how nice that turns out look at that look at that so and that's super easy you guys saw how easy that was and you could put peppers in here whatever you want but the broccoli that's blanched cooked perfectly because now it's still crispy it's not mushy and look I try making it nice and pretty for you, but then I get greedy with the sauce. So you put that sauce all over the whole thing. You know, that's your seasoning. Um, let it soak in there. Okay, there's the pretty way. And then uh, here's the digusto way in a second. That's how I do it. Boom. Just pour that all over the top because I want to slice this one too. All right. So that's, that's the final dish. Um, and then here's a... Uh, there's a picture of it. So it ended up looking like it was, it was good. I ain't gonna lie. Okay, so this one I want to show you guys. This is a, the egg boiling. What I'm going to show you guys this morning. See the, the water is at a rolling boil. I'm going to put some eggs in here. Okay. And I use tongs to put eggs in because if you crack, if you drop them in, they tend to crack on the bottom and then they're not going to be a hard boiled egg, it's going to be a half full boiled, no shell egg, and then half soft boiled, I don't know, it's just, it's not a good thing. So you want to place them down there. I'm going to do five. I'm going to show you. These are all going to cook for 13 minutes. And the purpose of this experiment is we're going to cook them all at the same temperature, and you see how that went from a rapid boil back down to a simmer because of the cold eggs. And then you can see, see the, how the bubbles are coming up hotter over here? That's called the hot spot of your pan. And these are good pans. They have a copper bottom, but, you know, they could still get hot spots. Um, so we're going to boil, this, boil these for 13 minutes, and then I'm going to put some in an ice bath. And then some are just going to go onto a plate, okay? So what I might do is I'll put three in the ice bath, 
I'll put one on a plate, let it cool down to air temperature, and then I'll leave one in the water, all right? And then I'll show you, once you take them apart, the, the importance of shocking something in ice water. Okay. <clears throat> all right, I promise this is the last part of this. All right, timer has gone off. We're gonna take these out. Use your tongs. Ice bath. Ice bath. Ice bath. Move this around a little bit. We'll leave one in there. And then this little fella, we're gonna put right here. And just let it cool down naturally. Okay, so this is what we get. We're gonna let that one keep like stay in the water. I've seen people actually cook eggs like this. I don't know why, <clears throat> but they'll bring the water up to a boil for about 10 or 12 minutes and they shut it off. Or they'll do it for, uh, somebody has it down to a science. Uh, somebody I worked with did it for like six minutes, shut it off and covered them and left them covered for like 10 minutes and then put them in ice water. I don't know. But, um, so this is boiled for 13 minutes. We're just gonna let it cool down like that. 13 minutes, cool down room temperature. 13 minutes, cool down in an ice water bath. This is to shock it. Um, and I'll explain to you what happens with this process <clears throat> in about five minutes when these are cold. Okay, last one, and then we'll wrap up. All right, just for uh, me not burning my hand purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and take this one out of the water. Set it on this lid. Okay, now, now that one will do last. See how it's still steaming? This one's still warm inside, okay? Um, so the first one we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you an easy way to roll to, to take these out. Let me get a plate too, so you can Plate, it's not gonna do the, do the trick. Okay, so you take one out of the ice water, all right? This is cooled down. What happens is, when you cook an egg that does not crack, it expands inside that shell. And it won't crack the shell, as long as you do this properly. It will not crack the shell, so it expands. What you need this thing to do is contract. So when it heats up, it gets those molecules moving really fast. They start cooking, they expand. Um, and then once you put it in the ice water, it goes and it, it stops the molecules and it shrinks them back. Okay, so it pulls back away from the shell. If you just crack this on one side, roll it with your hand, see how that shell comes right off, okay? That is perfect, okay, that's what you want. So when you're making, you know, egg salad, you do this in a restaurant, if you're making deviled eggs or egg salad, you deviled eggs, you can't even use this one because it cracked right there. Um, you're gonna do two, 300 eggs, you know, maybe 150. If you have a guest of 300 people, they all want one deviled egg, that's 150 eggs you gotta do this to. So see how that came off? Okay, this one, <clears throat> it might roll off, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm very skeptical. So, okay, see it's not, see how it is not pulling off the shell at all? Um, this one's gonna be a little, a little more tricky. So, it'll come off, it's, once you get it cracked, it'll peel. Um, okay, there's this one. Let's leave that in the bowl, that way we know. Okay, and then this last little fella, I'm gonna burn my hand. Um, this has been expanded all the way to the brink of no more expanding. But we're gonna try to get it out of here anyway. And if you've ever done this and you've had eggs that stick, like these shells do not come off, that's because they weren't shocked. Well, I'm actually surprised this thing came off so easy. Um, but a lot of times they'll expand and then they'll stick really bad. Okay, so let's leave that right there. Now what I'm gonna do is cut these open so you can see. Okay, here's the one that was shocked, all right? Let's go ahead and cut this in half. Okay, look at that. Absolutely perfect. Um, it's cooked all the way through and then you don't have any gray. All right, that's exactly what you want for a hard boiled egg. This one, it may be, let's look. 
That one's actually turned out really well. I'm shocked, but it's still hot. Um, it did stick quite a bit, <clears throat> but it didn't overcook. Overcooking is when your eggs turn gray around the outside. And 13 minutes is perfect. You see how that turned out? Okay, this one stayed in the water. Well, it's gonna prove me wrong here. Wow, it actually looked decent. I'm so ashamed of myself. But typically what would happen is this starts to get this like orangish gray, or not orange, um, this grayish blue color on the outside. And that means it's just been cooked too long. Like it has a tiny bit. But that's it. So that's the different ways of doing it. Mainly I want to show you how the shocking works. Overcooked eggs, which I can't even try to overcook an egg, I'm so good, um, will turn that grayish green color on the outside. And that just leads to an ugly egg salad, ugly deviled eggs, okay? But I want you to show, see how easy that was when it was shocked. Okay, so. I know that was long. Um, there's five questions to do. Oh, that picture is awful. <clears throat> five questions to do. Watch the lecture. Um, that's your recap of, of uh, cooking methods.